Welcome back guys. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how we can take data off the raw server and put it into our own C++ program. And we're going to do this by writing a ROS subscriber. The ROS subscriber we're going to write is going to subscribe to YOLO, the open source image recognition software that we set up in the last tutorial. And we're going to figure out what YOLO is seeing and get it into our own program so we can make decisions based off of what's being seen. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to go ahead and open up Sublime and then I'm going to come to the folder that says IQ GNC, come to source and then make new file. Then I'm going to go ahead and do control S and save this as sub.cpp, enter. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead come back to the follow along and within the follow along I'm going to grab these two lines these two lines, excuse me. And then I'm going to go back to Sublime, open up the CMake list for the IQ GNC ROS package, and then paste these two lines right in there. And basically what these two lines do is when uh, we compile using CatCam build, uh, we're going to make an executable called sub, and the compiler is being pointed to source uh, underscore su or slash sub dot cpp the file that we just made and uh, it's going to have access to all the Kakian libraries is basically what this is saying so now let's come back to sub dot cpp and begin coding so the first thing we're going to need to do is include ross so to include ross we're going to go ahead and copy hashtag include and then ross slash ross dot h and then boom copy that in and then, of course, we're running a C++ file, so we're going to need the function int main. And so let's just go ahead and copy that in. Boom. Pretty basic. Uh, this goes in pretty much every C++ file. So the next thing that we have to add is something that's ROS specific. So for every ROS um, program that you write, you're always going to have to um, add this function ROS init. And then um, you'll add in the command line um, variables that you can pass when you start up the, the executable. And then you'll call your ROS node something. So I'm going to call this detection sub, since we're going to be subbing to subscribing to the detection um, topic from YOLO. And then uh, the next line here is basically making a ROS node handle. And this node handle is basically the way that ROS can access um, the different topics that are available and so that's what that does. So now that we've declared that we're using ROS, let's go ahead and look at setting up our subscriber. So in order to declare a subscriber, um, basically you're going to need a couple pieces of information. You're going to need the node handle, which is what we just declared. Then you're going to need the topic in which you want to get the information from and then you want to specify how many messages you're going to buffer um, and so this is useful if basically like your subscriber node is um, refreshing at a rate that's lower than the rate that the data is being published so in that event you may not be getting all of the messages so uh, you may want to have a little bit of a buffer so that your subscriber can catch up however in my experience, I usually specify this as one because I usually just want the latest and greatest data. Um, and then finally, usually specify a callback function. And this callback function is basically where you're going to take the message, deconstruct it, and then uh, basically manipulate the data and decide what you're going to do. Um, but there's a couple of pieces of information that we don't have here, and that is basically the topic and we want to figure out what topic we want to get our data from so if we go ahead and launch uh, darknet which is the node that we want to get our data from we can go ahead and run some of the ROS commands that we learned in previous videos and figure out what data is available so let's go ahead and run darknet right now alright so Although it can't find an image stream, we can still see the topics that are being published and subscribed. So let's open up another terminal and run ROS topic list. 
All right, so we see a couple different uh, topics here. So there's bounding boxes, uh, check for objects, um, and a couple different um, topics, or a couple, a couple different topics that control how YOLO is operating. Um, there's the actual detection image with the bounding box. Uh, this is basically just publishing if it's found um, objects or not. Um, but what we're really interested in here is this topic right here, darknet bounding boxes and this is what we're gonna build our subscriber for so with that uh, now that we figured that out right we can go ahead and put that in our subscriber so it'll end up being this raw subscribers uh, sub we'll call it sub equals n which is our node handle dot subscribe and then our topic which is the darknet Ross bounding boxes one one message buffer and then detection CB which is our callback function so let's go ahead and copy this in to our program boom alright so there's one more tiny little thing that we need to add to our int main function and that is ross colon colon spin boom and basically what this ross function does is it makes the int main function run infinitely right here on this line but every time it cycles back through the spin it calls the subscriber callback function detection cb and now we can go ahead and write our callback function alright so now let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do for the callback function so for the callback function we're going to need what type of ROS message we're subscribing to. So, in order to do that, let's take a look at what type of message is on this topic by running ROS topic list dash v and then the name of the topic. So, let's copy that in and then put this in the terminal and see what returns. So, boom. Basically, we're going to be using um, the ROS message darknet ROS under underscore messages bounding boxes. And this is a custom ROS message um, that has a bunch of different data with inside it. So let's go ahead and see what kind of data is inside here. So if we go ROS message show and then the name of this topic, we can see what is inside here. And basically you have a header which has a timestamp and then the frame ID. Um, and then you have an image header and then a timestamp in the frame ID. And so typically this right here is um, the header from the actual image. And this timestamp is different from this one because this timestamp is basically the one where the image has already been processed and the detections have happened. And this one is basically where the original image was taken. And so you can, you can, tr you can figure out um, how much time it took to process by subtracting these two headers um, and then in here we can see x y x y and so basically this is the bounding box and then it also has the probability in the class and the class is what object it is seeing so this is the data that we want to get so let's go ahead and write our callback function so that we can find this data so let's roll down here and just go ahead and copy this in and then I'll talk about uh, wh what is going on here. Boom. Okay, so in our callback function, this is called every time um, we're spinning and this just happens over and over again. And then we're inputting the ROS message pointer, right? So the message that is on that being published on that topic is darknet ROS message bounding boxes and that's what we just found out by running the ROS message show command on the topic that um, that we're subscribing to and then we're specifying that we're getting the pointer um, to this message and we're calling that message and then we're gonna come in here and just write the rest of the code but before we can get um, this data we need to first declare that we're gonna be using this message in our program so let's go ahead copy this and then uh, include what we what this message is. So go ahead and type include, and then do this, and then paste that in. But go ahead and change this to slash and then dot h. Boom. Okay.
Cool, so now we have the um, bounding box message um, here in our code as message. And we want to print out what um, what objects YOLO is seeing. And so uh, let's go back and look at our structure again. And basically, the name of the message is here as class. And that is within an object called bounding boxes. And bounding boxes is actually an array of bounding boxes. So we're going to need a little bit of a for loop to um, go ahead and print out all of the different classes that YOLO is seeing. So let's go ahead and start by coding up this for loop. So go ahead and write for, and then the parentheses, brackets, and then uh, we'll write int uh, i is equal to zero, and then i is less than message, and then dereference it, and then we'll put bounding boxes dot size. And then go ahead and put i plus plus. And basically this for loop will just go through and run uh, once for each bounding box that is in the message. And in here we want to go ahead and print out uh, what type of object YOLO is seeing. So let's go ahead and use ross underscore info and then um, close that and we'll put percent s and detected and then go ahead and dereference the message again but this time go ahead and grab the class so bounding boxes of i and then dot class dot c string and so basically um, one thing you need to note here is this c string function is a um, sub-function of the object string in C++ and Ross is actually expecting a C string which is actually just a, an array of chars so it doesn't recognize this um, string class so we go ahead and use the sub-function which goes ahead and just converts this string into a char array which we then we can go ahead and output on the Ross info but this looks like it should run so well after we add our semicolon, that should go ahead and run. So let's go ahead and save this, and then make sure our C make list, make list is saved as well. And then open up a terminal and go ahead and cd into catskin, and then run catskin build. And let's go ahead and just wait for this to build up. Boom! It looked like it worked. So let's go ahead and test it out using the simulation that we've been using in the last couple tutorials. So let's go ahead and just open up a couple um, terminals here. And we'll, first one, we'll run ROS and then launch. And uh, we'll make it IQ underscore sim and then hills dot launch. Boom. And while that's booting up, go ahead and run the Articopter. Uh, software in the blue. Alright, so everything is still booting up, um, but it looks like YOLO's actually getting uh, images now. And uh, so the last thing we need to run is our program that we just uh, built. So go ahead and run ROS, run, and then IQ underscore GNC and then sub boom okay so it's not getting anything and that's because YOLO is not seeing anything so we need to make YOLO see something um, and in order to do that we need to take off our drone and make sure our drone can see the truck and the guy so it looks like our drone is ready to fly so let's go ahead and go over to the map proxy terminal which is here type mode guided and then arm throttle and then take off 10 and click back to where we are so it detected a couple a couple of false detections at the beginning a knife and a bird so yellow isn't perfect but it's pretty damn good so now we can take this data and write some really cool uh, programs um, based off of what the drone is seeing so in the next video I'm going to show you guys how we can write a really cool um, search and rescue program based off of what the drone's seeing. 
So until then, I hope you enjoyed what you learned in this program. Uh, peace out.